Thanks very much for staying. Welcome back. Now to the very first story. Ghana's financial market has low participation compared with its peers in the African region. That's the conclusion of the Maiden Barclays Africa Financial Market Index report launched in Washington, D.C. George Raffi has more. The launch brought together governors and finance ministers from several African countries, including Ghana. Various officials from Barclays Africa during the launch of the index explained why they decided to carry out the research and how it should be used by regulators in each of the African countries. The index tracked financial markets of 17 African countries, including Ghana, on five main pillars. That is, market death, access to foreign exchange, market transparency, tax and regulatory environment, capacity of local investors, and macroeconomic opportunities. On capacity of local investors, which looked at the level of interest and holdings of local persons, the various investment instruments on the capital market. In this area, Ghana scored 12 out of 100, the lowest score recorded in all the five pillars reviewed, and it was ranked 15 out of the 17 countries reviewed in this particular index. It also showed that most of the local investors haven't got the right level of savings to hold most of these assets on the market. This means that most of the assets were held by foreigners, opening us up to external shocks, capital flights, and pressure on the Ghana city anytime they decide to move the money away. However, despite this challenge, the country made some strong gains when it came to regulation, transparency, and tax, as it was ranked 8 out of the 17 markets reviewed. You know, the country was used for having some strong potential for growth, as well as a market leader in the region. But speaking of the program, Finance Minister Ken Ofriata said they are working hard to correct the challenges identified with Ghana. South Africa came on top as having the best and the well-developed market in the region. Meanwhile, the managing director of Barclays Africa, George Asante, tells Joy Business, despite this challenge, regulators in Ghana have still made some progress that need to be commended. The Barclays Africa Financial Market Index is um, a report that we put together with the support of OMFIF, which is an independent think tank and a, a research organization. Um, and it's supposed to uh, determine or be a barometer of um, the accessibility and openness of African financial markets and the intention really is to uh, have something that will help accelerate uh, structural reforms that are needed um, to be able to move the African continent ahead from a resource mobilization perspective. So uh, one of the key things we want to achieve through this is uh, to be able to have a, a common reference point for African countries uh, and a platform for discussions and importantly to agree on um, where each African country is relative to what uh, best practice is supposed to be, identify gaps and come together as an industry and with stakeholders to agree on what we need to do to close those gaps uh, across countries. I think uh, as a measure of success, what we want to achieve really is that in a couple of years' time, we we should have African markets more deepened, uh, have a broader investor base, be more inclusive, and the market should be able to mobilize uh, the necessary resources that are needed by the continent for infrastructure development. Let's come to Ghana specific, and then one would ask that how did Ghana fare in this whole report that was put out, and how can regulators in Ghana and even players in Ghana leverage on this report to attract the necessary capital, focus, and interest on their market? Market. So I think the first point, and we were very privileged to have the Minister of Finance, who himself is uh, a markets-related person, um, as, as one of our key panelists. And I think the key issue for Ghana is that there are a lot of uh, positives and foundational work that have been done. Uh, so from uh, an openness perspective, uh, the country has basically uh, passed a couple of laws that allow uh, the broadening of uh, the pension sector for example, which is a very important uh, pillar uh, for market development. Um, there has also been a conscious effort to move away from a controlled 
a currency to a currency that free floats. Um, so that is also a very positive uh, achievement for Ghana. Um, Ghana came in in the midpoint, and I think some of the developmental things that needs to be done from a Ghana perspective are things like uh, addressing gaps that we have in our legal framework uh, to ensure that um, when parties in the financial market enter into contract, uh, there is absolute protection uh, for each party. So we should be talking about about documentation, is this game race? How enforceable are they in the local market? If I enter into a contract with someone and there is collateral backing it, um, to what extent can I rely on the agreement I have with the person in terms of enforcing my collateral? So there are uh, very positive things that have been done, but there are also additional things that need to be done to move the country to um, the, the, the real ideal state. And I think Ghana has a big opportunity from that perspective. And back home in Ghana, Minister for Employment, Ignatius Bafuiwa, says government is still committed to improving the conditions of service for workers in both private and public sectors. Some worker unions have over the years demonstrated against poor working conditions and have asked for an improvement in their working conditions. Mr. Uwa was speaking at the 2017 HR Focus Conference and Awards. The 2017 Human Resource Focus Conference and Awards saw top business executives from the various HR departments and institutions being rewarded for their contribution to human resource management in the country. CEO of Lene Services Limited asked workers in private and public sectors to adapt to the changing scenes of technology if they remain committed to expanding their human resource base. If there has been one thing that HR professionals have had to deal with in the last two years, it has been the issue of keeping staff engaged and maximizing investments, especially with talent. With the majority of 21st century workforce being millennials who are technologically savvy, it has become imperative for HR to rearrange themselves and relook really at their culture and processes if they are to make any meaningful impact to the business, this is what they should do. Because what used to work, does not really work anymore. Minister for Employment Ignatius Bafo Iwa called on employers to ensure that the rights of workers are respected. Our HR practice should lead to the employment of more and more of our young people who are currently not working. If I was ever asked to indicate the biggest problem of this country today, or the biggest fear that I have as a citizen, I would never say that my biggest fear is that perhaps if we are not very careful, one day soldiers will run on government and take control over the reins of governments. Neither will I say that my biggest fear is that some other country nationals will run over us and annex our country. I would rather say that our biggest problem is the teeming number of young people who are supposed to work but are not being engaged and can constitute themselves into a force against leadership in this country. Unemployment is a huge problem, a problem on our hands as a nation. And it behoves on us, both as public and private practitioners, to ensure that we help reduce this problem on our head. The award ceremony saw MTN adjudged the overall best organization in HR practice. Meanwhile, Talo Oil, uh, a company which won awards in energy and human, e human efficiency, says it will be expanding its tentacles in the exploration of oil in Ghana. According to the Director of Human Resources, Irina Sante, the company will, in the coming years, be exploring best ways of remaining the leading multinational gas exploration company in Ghana and upstream sectors. I think in the next few years we're going to maintain our assets, uh, we're going to work hard to ensure that we maximise our production wherever we can and we're obviously going to ensure that we have good relationships with our key stakeholders and we want to really work in partnership and it is about mutual benefit. So we're going to continue to strive for those relationships. We are an organisation that cares a lot about their people. Um, we 
pride ourselves in making sure that we provide a good environment for people, for our employees to work in. Um, it's about having the best HR practices within the industry sector. And I think that we've been recognized for that. We're proud of our employee engagement. We're proud of our people. We have localization plans, succession planning, employee engagement. So we're very proud of the award. It's going to give us an opportunity to even work harder and do more for our employees. So I certainly think that we'll think a lot about our performance management, more about our people management, how we can continue to develop our leaders and our middle management, etc. So we're going to do a lot more. Away from that, the National Food and Buffer Stock Company, NAFCO, is embarking on a program to rehabilitate all abandoned warehouses in the country as a means to beef up the current food stock, food stock in the country. Statistics from the World Food Program indicates that 5 million Ghanaians are food insecure. This trend, according to NAFCO, is due to the non-availability of a market for farmers across the country. Speaking to Joy Business in commemoration of the World Food Day today, Acting Chief Executive of NAFCO, Abdul Wahab Hanan, hinted of a bumper harvest in the last quarter of the year. According to him, various interventions by government, including the planting for food and jobs policy, will go a long way to significantly boost national food stocks and subsequently reduce the cost of food. We don't have enough storage, not because we don't produce. We produce and there's no market. I am just coming from Laura, <coughs> which is Excellency the President. Most districts in the three northern regions are sharing borders with uh, Burkina Faso and Togo. So our farmers, after they harvest their produce, they sell this produce to the neighboring countries simply because of lack of ready market in Ghana. So we are positioning ourselves very well to provide them with prompt payment, the minimum guarantee price. We are going to uh, have this expansion of our district warehouse capacities uh, in a minimum of 1,000 metric tons of each. Now, development planning offices across the country have undergone training in value for money analysis on government's projects. The Petroleum Revenue Management Law mandates the Finance Ministry to publish statuses of implementation of oil-funded projects. It also requires a report to be submitted to Parliament on whether the projects contribute to economic activity at the local level. However, about 80% of these projects either go unmonitored or never get executed. Prince Apia was at the training session and has filed this report. Only the Public Interest and Accountability Committee, PIAC, as well as Africa Centre for Energy Policy, ASEP, selects oil-funded projects for monitoring in the country. Therefore, about 80% of oil-funded projects either go unmonitored or never get executed. Technical advisor for the Ministry of Planning, Ishmael Aka, says poor supervision of oil-funded projects leads to mismanagement of the oil revenue. The budget should emanate from a certain plan, what we call the medium-term plan. Every district has a medium-term plan. And before they come out with the medium-term plan, they do, they do needs assessment. They meet their people to identify the needs. So this needs assessment and the medium-term plan should influence the national budget. So if you are coming to do a project in my district, then it should be something from my medium-term plan. Of that is also not done. So we have a situation where there is this gap between plan and the medium term plan and the actual implementation of projects. So the Ministry of Planning decided to bridge this gap and also to make sure that the status of implementation report is published. So we decided to select all uh, development planning officers in Ghana to train them to train them in value for money analysis, to give them the list of oil-funded projects so that they know which projects are within their district, to track them, write a report, tell us about the contractors working. It also, this will also generate data for even media and civil society for their own independent checks. After which they will submit their reports to the Ministry of Planning, we put the report together and submit to Parliament. So that officials who need to be questioned, we invite them, and contractors that needs to be questioned, we also question them. So this is what we call the Petroleum Revenue Information System. 
we will have a website and all projects will be listed. So in future, even before the implementation starts, we send a list to the planning officers. We are trying to align the planning with the budgeting so that we won't have a situation where we are planning for A and we are doing B, which also affects how we finance our things. Mr. Aka spoke to Love Business at a training session in Kumase for planning officers of Metropolitan, Municipal and District Assemblies. It was a collaboration of Ministries of Planning, Finance and Local Government and Rural Development supported by Ghana Oil and Gas for Inclusive Growth. Mr. Aka believes the training will ensure judicious use of resources for the benefit especially of the vulnerable. The third challenge is normally political, that if you talk too much, you may be transferred from your district to another district, which we are also dealing with the Ministry of Local Government to see how best we can resolve some of these issues. Now, the Ministry of Planning and the Ministry of Local Government are working together uh, to deal with those issues. But when it comes to the online portal, it is a little bit different in the sense that it will not just list the project. It will have the project, the amount, the district, the town, the effect of the project the rate of completion, the contractor's name and address so that people can verify. Then it will have mobile app so that people can even download the app. You can just download it, type your community's name to see whether or your funded project. And it will have GPS coordinate so that even if I'm in Kumasi or Accra, I can still see whether the project is ongoing or not. So Prince Apia, reporting. The central bank will soon introduce a policy in line with the national cyber security policy and strategy in order to curb fraud in the banking space. This follows a recent report that revealed a more than 282% surge in fraud cases in the banking sector. In an interview with Joy Business, National Cyber Security Advisor to Government, Albert M. Pibuesiakou, said plans are far advanced to finalize the policy. Each single device which is connected to a network each single financial services product or solution that is adopted in the banking sector attracts financial fraudsters. That is why you have, let's, let's give that scientific background of why you have the increment uh, in the fraud cases. We need to address that. I was with the central bank today to meet the deputy governor to discuss some of these issues. And I think I can tell you they are finalizing a policy document that is in line with the national cyber security policy and strategy towards addressing those issues. Yes, you need a policy. And after the policy or the directive, then the central bank can police that policy. Because you need to set the standards, the benchmark for the financial institutions to, to step up. You know, and I think they understand, the financial sector understand that as they are enhancing digitalization of their financial environment, they need to also step, step up the security aspect of that. So, but you need a regulator to come in strongly to make sure the target is set for them to work on. And I believe this thing will come up before the end of the year. It is a concern, not to the national secretariat, but specifically to the regulator, the central bank. Now, before we go, does the amount you pay for goods match up with the quantity you get? Well, as, the, as Ghana joined the rest of the world to celebrate World Standards Day that was marked on the 14th of October, MFA Nancy Jardusi visited the Malamata market here in Accra to find out how market women, the traders, are able to measure quantity of goods without standardized devices. Unlike other foreign countries where we have you know, weighing scales, measuring um, food, measuring foodstuffs, here in Ghana and some other African countries, situation is different. They use their hands because they say they've had experience for so many years. We've been selling this for so many years, so we are able to determine with our hands easily. Also, the attitude of the customers also influences the measurements of the because <laughs> 
Then the mommy will name her. What she's saying is that there's no way you can get the same, you know, quantity for at least two people who are coming to buy the same product. So this fish, two cities to my left, two cities to my right. But obviously, if I hold this one a bit tight, you realize that the one on my left is a bit yeah, heavier than the one on my right. So um, she's saying that there's no way would have the same measurement for two. So what she does is that she tries as much as possible to measure in her best way so that she doesn't cheat people. But she's also saying that often she gives her customers um, more than somebody who probably is coming to buy for the first time. Uh -huh. This tin goes for 20 Ghana cities. Under normal circumstances, I would compare the paper so it's very full but those that come to disturb us with reductions we don't compress it we just give it to them like that sometimes i say how can crow bet my you be so now two cd and one cd acquire pet into we are salad in the nation send the the cabbage in mum and I sometimes say any concumbano and other mobile to say we say two city in kitchen pie woman so wait me and about cool and city green pepper and also about cool and city me and sun two city in new ones can also mean sun into who are wet my father wet my kit away one who wait okay five city one who wait in when so one Okay. To see one whole difference. Uh, basically, what she's saying is that, so for instance, with the lettuce, um, she's able to tell by counting them. So she takes the smaller ones, she can take like three and sell them for two cities, and she can take the big, big ones and sell them, she can take like four or five of them and sell them for five cities. So with the lettuce, it's a bit difficult because of the, the way it is. But for the likes of the cabbage, even though she doesn't have a weighing skill, she's able to determine um, the way of it by just, you know, she's been selling it for a very long time, so she's able to use her hands to scale it up and then determine the price for it. We say customers are always right. Is that really the assertion? What are the things you look out for? The thing I do is I move around the market because I don't just be on a particular spot when I'm buying things because I know they sell it in a different ways. So when I price yours and then I go and compare other person's prices to yours and when I get a difference then I decide okay this is the one i want to buy okay this one is much if this is two cities okay this is much more than the other one so let me just buy for instance onion like this the group sent in um, maybe four is for two cities and then three is for one cities looking at the differences the difference is just only one so why wouldn't you go for one cities when you buy one city you can get six and looking at the two cities is four so when you buy four cities you get only four so I would rather prefer going for the one CD, two of the one CD. That's that, that one. I'll get six rather than going for the normal two CD. This is just a wake-up call to our industry players, our regulators, to ensure that we have world-class standards in Ghana. Reporting for Joy News, Nancy MFR Dradosi. Meanwhile, the Ghana Standards Authority says it will introduce a standardized measuring system in, on the markets. Head of Metrology at the Authority, Paul Michael Date, told my colleague, Gifty Andor, on the polls earlier. We are supposed to inculcate in them system of weighing. They must be weighing their produce. But is that a workable plan? Because when it, you get to the market, at the end of the day, they are still going to weigh with their hand. No, we are going to move it right from that level into the market. Okay. Now, when you start from the market, they will say where they go to buy, it is not weighed. You know. Okay, so you are so starting from there. From the source. Okay. And then through the entire chain, chain. to the market. I see. And are you providing them with skills with which they can be weighing? Um, providing skills for everybody will not be possible. But then, um, depending on how organized various groups are, some NGOs can decide to provide weighing skills for some groups. The weighing, uh, we hope to, with our stakeholders, including World Food Program, including uh, PTB of Germany, USAID, and other donor partners, uh, Minister of Food and Agri, Minister of Trade and Industry, Minister of Local Government. 
And that will be it for this afternoon's edition of the Marketplace. Thanks so much for your company. And make time again tomorrow for another interesting edition. My name is Emmanuel Apuaji. We have a good afternoon.